Well, well, here we are on the sesquicentennial of uh, Lincoln's delivery of what has come to be known as the Gettysburg Address, uh, 150 years uh, after he delivered it, November 19th, 1863. Why are we still reading it? Why are we still reciting it and some of us memorizing it four score and seven years ago and all that? Uh, I think a great reason for that is, of course, uh, we live at a time where people uh, want to know what America stands for in a world where we're debating what kind of leadership we should have in the globe. We have a president who wants to have us step back a little bit and have global leadership be more of a shared project, a shared project for shared ends, uh, a time in which uh, Americans, uh, among other people, are being attacked for what we stand for. And Lincoln um, says a lot about what he thought and I think many Americans today still think we stand for. A year after the attack on 9-11, Governor Pataki didn't give a speech, uh, new words for that altogether new situation. He found old words, an old speech. Uh, he read verbatim Lincoln's Gettysburg Address uh, at a time where we needed to find uh, meaning or regain our understanding of who we are as a people and what we mean uh, for ourselves, for our posterity, and for the world. If there is anything that we can give the world uh, that in a way belongs to us, but uniquely or ironically enough uh, can belong to them as well. The things that we stand for as Americans aren't things that are related to blood or tribe. Uh, these are things that are related to our humanity. Um, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Uh, that's something we were saying not just for ourselves, but something that we thought at the time of the founding, and Lincoln certainly thought was an idea that was to liberate the world, kind of like the Statue of Liberty, right? This gift from France uh, that has the title Liberty Enlightening the World. Uh, I think that, that, that that's something, uh, a great deal at the heart of what the Gettysburg Address means for people today. Edward Everett, who was the keynote speaker that day, actually recognized that for all his two hours long speech, uh, that Lincoln's uh, two and a half minute long speech was the one that got to the central point of the occasion. He wrote Lincoln that very day, congratulating him uh, about the speech and said he wished he could flatter himself to think that he had got to the central meaning of the occasion in two hours, uh, as well as Lincoln did in two minutes. Uh, and in fact, later wrote Lincoln uh, requesting a copy of the speech so that he could include it in a scrapbook that had his speech as well as other uh, artifacts that could be auctioned off to raise money for the war effort. And so at least uh, someone who's known to give pretty good speeches thought Lincoln did uh, uh, better than most on that day. So I think over time, especially with our first martyr president, um, uh, with the death of Lincoln and all that he had accomplished, not just uh, preserving the Union, but freeing the slaves, um, that what Lincoln said came to mean um, a great deal more to Americans over time. And given that he did so much uh, to not just save the Union, but shape the kind of Union it became, a Union of the people, by the people, for the people, which included a new birth of freedom, as he says in the Gettysburg Address. In other words, that that freedom was the entitlement not just for white people, but for blacks as well. Uh, because of all those things, all those things that America became, uh, fulfilling what the founders intended uh, way back in uh, uh, 1776 in the Declaration of Independence. Uh, for all of those reasons, uh, I think that speech came to become our iconic speech. As I like to say to my students, uh, if there was a Martian who came to Earth and knew English and had to look at one particular document that would give us the essence of what American democracy is, I don't think uh, anyone would, would hesitate to say, the Gettysburg Address uh, ought to be right at the top of, of, of the list of uh, what an English-speaking Martian should read.